episodes of Ben's Machines. Tonight we're working, we're continuing to work on the International 350 Utility Tractor. The last time we were here together in the garage, you saw me remove the, in, the intake manifold off the engine. So a lot, is, a lot of progress has been made since then. Um, I've got the, the surface of the engine block cleaned up. Uh, and I, as you can see here, I have uh, my newly made gaskets in place, and the all the studs to hold the gas, the uh, the manifold in place. They're all, they've all been, you know, prepared for reinstallation. So I've got copper anti seize on those. I have my half inch uh, drive with my Makita impact. So what we're going to do today, tonight is is reassemble the the manifold and I'm glad that you can join us for this. So let's go over and I'll show you what the manifold looks like. So here's here's the manifold that we're going to reinstall. This is the manifold and this is the carburetor. So the carburetor the carburetor has been cleaned um, and uh, and all the, the nuts and passages have, have been cleaned up. Over on the bench, I'll just show you. This, this, is, uh, this is a spare carburetor, or a, uh, the carburetor that I picked up. Um, the reason why I did that is that this is, this is the original carburetor. I didn't know this until after I took it apart that there was um, a, a piece of the casing of the carburetor that was broken. So I... I found a, um, a friend, a local friend, who's got a bunch of uh, tractor parts and it just so happened that he had a carburetor for me so I took, I took this half of the carburetor off so this is the original one for the tractor I've taken it off and I, I added it to the bottom section of the carburetor that, uh, that's original with the tractor. So. This is how this, this goes on. Like this. This is the, the air intake, so and this is the choke butterfly. And then right here, this is the, the throttle, the governor butterfly valve. And this is your fuel intake. So this is the old one. So I'll keep these, these pieces for uh, for parts, this is the original uh, exhaust manifold or an intake manifold gasket. So, what I ended up doing is is that I, I took some some new sheets of of gasket material and I and I I basically traced traced it out using this as a template, and that's the two new ones that you see on the engine. Another thing that I did to prepare the reinstall is uh, I ran a, a tap. It is a, a 7 16 tap through each one of the holes, the mounting holes in the block. So I, I did that in advance of the reinstallation of the manifold that we're gonna, you're gonna see. I did that just to make sure that when we go and we put our, our bolts in, they they they're gonna be they're gonna hold really well in the engine block. I was talking about the anti seize, so I'm using Permatex copper anti seize on all the bolts, and I am also going to install a brand new fuel filter as well as a, a brand new segment of of fuel line as well. So without delay, let's let's get. The manifold installed. Maybe just before we we put it on, I just like to note that I did spend some time to prepare the surface of the manifold. So I used 
uh, my die grinder using the uh, compressed air of the compressor and I and I I put uh, I used a, a moderate grit 3m disc and I just cleaned off the surface right right down to metal and I did the same thing too on the on the contact surface on the on the the engine block now this this material is cast iron so cast iron is is typical for for automotive industrial exhaust and intake manifolds it's a it's it's a good material to use but one of the properties of cast iron is that it, it's brittle so for for this reinstallation is very important that that the contact surface between the manifold and the engine with the gaskets they're all the same or there's there's no variant variability in the in the gap between you know the 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 contact surface between between this part and the engine and i say that is that this this kind of mat material does not does not bend it's very brittle therefore you have to ensure that this surface is clean and the mating surface is clean and the same the correct or the same the same thickness of gasket used on this side has to be the same as this side because once you start tor torquing down these bolts they have to be torqued evenly evenly the same to prevent any any uh, you know big change in in the the distance like in the gap between this part and the mating surface because otherwise you could it could induce a crack and that would defeat the whole purpose of this this work is that we don't we we had a we had an in we had an exhaust manifold that was cracked um, and obviously we don't want that so let's let's get to let's get to putting this this on so I'll set this down for now I'm going to remove remove these bolts. And I'm going to keep them up here. As as an easy reference for where they go on the tractor. I'll change over to my 11 sixteenths. Put this on, on, on. Now, I'm gonna pick up the assembly. Just thinking if we should if we should take this opportunity to tighten these nuts holding the carburetor on now so I have these four bolts holding the carburetor bolt in place maybe since since we have easy access to the carburetor we'll we'll tighten these right now. So I have a I have a gasket installed between the carburetor 
and the intake. It's just a lot easier getting access to these these nuts when when this is off off the tractor. Now rotate this. We need to line line up the whoops forgot I set I got these these bolts prepared in advance so I have to take these out in order to So these are bolts that mount the governor or the throttle control to the carburetor. Okay. Okay. That there. Put this on like that. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to install a bolt. Okay, so what I'll do, folks, is just, I'm just gonna run these, put these bolts in. That will keep, that will keep the keyway and the governor in place. Hopefully everything in place so that Nothing, it doesn't get dislodged. I did put process the, I did uh, run the, the carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner just to, to knock some of the, any of the debris that, that might have been present in the, in the passageways of the carburetor. I took the, the float out the needle out and made sure all that was that was clear and free of any any debris. I 
I'd say that's, so that's installed and fine. These are tight. These are tight. This is the choke, the choke lever bracket. So let's, let's go ahead and, and install the bolts for the intake. So I'm just going to use, I'm just going to snug them up. gotta be let's get everything loose until we get we get everything started first oh. we want to ensure constant so that once the intake seats up against the engine and it compresses the gasket, it'll compress it all uniformly at once. So I'm going to get my torque wrench and I'll start with a, a modest torque for now. So I'm going to remove remove that washer. carefully just for some reason I'm not able I'm not getting any any pork on this registering just yet there we go
that's a relief at least. We're getting we're getting some torque registering on all these bolts. Like I said, it's very important that for cast iron the same the same torque is being applied to the part equally. What's happening now is that our gasket is compre nice is compressing. And at this point, I don't want to torque this down too much. So right now I, I'm torquing it to 20 foot pounds. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave that, we're going to leave that like that at this time. Good idea when you're not using your torque wrench to to remove remove the tension off the torque when you when you put it away when you store your torque wrench. At this point, we've got the manifolds installed, the carburetor installed, the the throttle controller, the governor installed. The next step we're going to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to install the choke cable. So there's a choke lever that's controlled up up here by the steering wheel. When you pull on this knob. It, it actuates the choke. When you push it in, the choke broke it off. So now I'm gonna install, I'm gonna reinstall the choke cable to the choke lever on the carburetor. flat blade screwdriver to to compress compress the throttle cable so I'll get a flat blade screwdriver Okay, so that's, that's clamped down fairly well. And now I'll we'll use this long flat blade screwdriver and I'll try to tighten that set screw. Okay, so now I have the hand choke installed. When I pull on the lever, you can see the choke butterfly. If you see, you can see the choke butterfly valve is completely closed. So if you stay there and I push on the cable, it opens up. So that's the choke off. And here's choke on, there's choke off. So that's done. The next step, the next step we have to do is reconnect the fuel line. This is this is the the fuel line from the gas tank and the fuel port to the carburetor is right here. 
So what I'm going to install next is the is the original built-in uh, fuel filter screen, and then we'll plumb in my new automotive style inline fuel filter. So we'll see that next. So this is the step where I'm going to install this brass fitting. This is original to my understanding, or at least to my knowledge. And here's a, a brass wire, wire mesh. I guess it acts as, a, as a, a bit of a filter or fuel filter. So the next step is we'll, I'll thread this into the, to the carburetor. It basically goes in and it threads in here this and I'm using my 5 8 wrench just to get this threaded on. Let me get some light in this area. Make sure that you you install this fitting with the crush washer just so you don't have any leaks in this area or you don't have any fuel leaks in this area. Okay, I like how that is installed. The next, the next step, I'll install the the reducer that threads into this port. I'll show you what that looks like. This is the next. This is the next piece we're going to install. It's basically a brass fitting with a with a metal tube. This will thread into the this other piece we just installed right here. And I believe this is a, oh, this uses a half inch, half inch wrench. Okay, so maybe if you come over here, you can get a, a view of, of what we've got. Here, here's the, one of the last steps of the installation. This is this inline automotive style fuel filter. That's gonna go here, it's gonna be installed here. And that, and I've got some brand new fuel line, which is gonna be installed here to the fuel filter. And then again, from the fuel filter, to this pipe. Well, let's do that.
fuel travels down through the stop cock into this line into the fuel filter and then directly into the carburetor the fuel then gets pulled up by the suction or the vacuum of the engine into the intake and then to the into the cylinder heads technically at this point we could we could turn the fuel on and attempt to start the tractor. Neutral.